You know how to define an aviation fan? What do average people think of when they hear the name Rolls-Royce? Phantom, Ghost, Beauty and Luxury. An aviation fan thinks of this. And Rolls-Royce has always been this wild and will continue to be so. Hello aviators, Sky here and today we are going to walk a thorny path into the future. Introducing the Rolls-Royce Ultrafan. As expected, to understand the future we will have to dig into the past. In the late 1960s, global engine manufacturing was discovering a new frontier, large turbofan engines which everyone was busy mastering. The British entered this race in a rather difficult position as they had a shortage of resources, which is why their projects were slightly inferior to the brainchildren of their sworn friends, General Electric and Pratt Whitney. They decided to compensate for the local lack in a number of technologies by taking a step forward in the overall design. One of the problems with jet engines is that the different stages inside having different parameters also need to have different rotation speeds, and this is not easy to do. This problem was solved like this. The stages were divided into two spool groups, rotating at two speeds. The solution was a compromise, at least the fan was still too fast, with increased loads and noise. On large versions, the tips of the blades fly at supersonic speeds. But this was bearable. Actually, almost all modern jet engines operate on a twin spool layout. But not British ones. Rolls-Royce used a triple spool design. The third shaft was added to the usual twin spool design, which connected the fan to the turbine stages dedicated to it, giving it the optimal rotating speed. The system is more complex, technically and terminologically. All sorts of intermediate stages were added, but it gave excellent performance that allowed it to successfully compete with neighbors. This was not an easy task and did not justify itself immediately. But over time it was this design that became the basis of the company's main modern trump card. The Trent family. Trent was good, winning the love of aviators over the decades. But the years went by and at the beginning of the 21st century the time had come for all the latest technologies to face the problem. They were outdated. New models from competitors were pressing from all sides and it was difficult for Rolls-Royce to respond to this pressure. This is especially felt under the wing of the Boeing 787, where the Trent 1000 has to push against the Gen X from General Electric. And the competition between another upgrade and the brand new engine which applies new advanced technologies is difficult. The performance sometimes did not satisfy customers and soon problems with reliability began to arise, which cost the British dearly both financially and reputationally. The same customers of the 787 when choosing power plants clearly gave preference to the brainchild of General Electric. Something had to be done about this. Rolls-Royce adopted a long-term development program designed for periods of 5, 10 and 20 years. And while the 20-year plan was more of a futuristic fantasy, the first two turned into the Advance and Ultrafan programs. The Advance program was planned for 10 years, which means that it is ending approximately now. It involves the modernization of the existing line of Rolls-Royce engines and is divided into two sub-programs. Advance 2 deals with the BR700 family of small engines, popular on business jets. And Advance 3 is responsible for the big boys, the Trent family. Advance 3 is ambitious and involves the introduction of many new solutions, including radical ones. The point is one of Trent's features. For many years, the core of the engine was practically the same and performance was increased by upgrading the cold part, which by our time had become too complex and loaded, causing problems. And the engineers turned the table. The core became noticeably larger and more powerful, while the cold part was simplified considerably. But of course, switching the stages was not enough. One of the leaps of the advanced program was the large-scale implementation of Additive Layer Manufacturing or ALM, 3D printing. The technology allows for the production of fairly complex parts, often monolithic, which makes them lighter and more reliable. Rolls-Royce also began to actively use Ceramic Matrix Composites or CMC. 
The main bonus of CMC is the high heat resistance of parts made by this method, which is now almost the main problem in the conditions of constantly increasing operating temperatures in engines. The combustor also was not ignored. It has to apply the lean burn technology in operation when, less fuel than usual, is injected into the compressed air of the combustor. The advantage of this method is that it allows you to avoid underburning of excess fuel, reduce its consumption and consequently reduce emissions into the atmosphere. All these technologies are quite complex, require the establishment of advanced production and very accurate control, but it is clearly worth it. Increasing the time between overhauls, increasing the bypass ratio to 11 to 1, the overall pressure ratio to 60 to 1, to the level of the best modern models, and consequently significantly reduce fuel consumption compared to the current trends. The Advance 3 is actively developing. Rolls-Royce, together with several research centers and partner companies, is actively testing both individual elements and several prototypes, preparing new solutions for implementation in updated versions of the Trent 1000, Trent 7000 and Trent XWB engines, which are installed on the Boeing 787, Airbus A330neo and A350 respectively. And here we come to the Ultrafan project, which on the one hand is a direct continuation of Advanced 3, and on the other a huge step forward. The engine core, as well as the technological solutions described above, came here from the Advanced 3 project, but the rest of the design has changed significantly. And the main reason for the change is of course the main innovation of the engine, the gearbox. Let me remind you that the problem of the difference in the rotation speed of the engine stages has not gone away, and while Rolls-Royce boasted of its triple-spool design, other manufacturers stuck to the simpler twin-spool design and tolerated its compromises. Tolerated, but were looking for solutions. And they found them. A gearbox is a mechanism that connects the shaft and the fan and reduces the speed to the optimal level. In the class of large engines, the pioneer of this technology was Pratt Whitney with their PW1000G. This engine is amazing and has excellent performance, including a record-breaking bypass ratio of 12.5 to 1, the lowest noise levels in the class and low fuel consumption. Different versions can be seen under the wings of the A320neo, A220 and E-Jet E2. Its main competitor is the Leap engine, the brainchild of CFM, a joint venture between Saffron and, surprisingly, General Electric. When they go head-to-head, -head, these engines are very different. Pratt boasts a gearbox and CFM boasts the latest technological solutions, firstly developed for the Gen X engine from the Dreamliner. And then Rolls-Royce comes along and decides to use everything at once. First by mastering the technologies that General Electric and CFM boast about, and then the gearbox that Pratt Whitney boasts about. In principle, Ultrafan uses a similar design as the 1000G. A gearbox is installed between the shaft and the fan. The problem here is that no one has ever installed a gearbox on such large and powerful engines. It must digest tens of thousands of horsepower. The loads here are simply monstrous, not to mention the heat inside the mechanism that has to be somehow cooled. And there are many such issues, and they all must be resolved. And that's not all. The appearance of the gearbox changed the rest of the design. The new element actually does the same thing as the third spool, and combining them is already pointless. Now the gearbox is connected to the intermediate shaft and works together with the intermediate turbine and intermediate compressor, which was also improved by removing one stage. At the same time, with the connection of the gearbox and indirectly the fan, the required power has increased and the intermediate turbine is now not one stage, but four stage. The low pressure turbine along with its shaft is actually removed here. The total number of turbine stages has decreased from 10 to 6. And this is a very serious bonus, not only in terms of simplicity of design, but also in terms of weight. Loaded and subject to enormous temperature turbines are made of complex heat-resistant alloys, and they are terribly heavy. So the few of them the better. Yes, here again there may be confusion with the terms, with all these intermediate stages, and also the question. 
How is it that Ultrafan continues to be called Triple Spool, having actually lost the third shaft? Some call the third shaft the connection of the gearbox and the fan. Others refer to the traditions of trends and marketing. It sounds cool. In addition, Rolls-Royce differentiates the concepts of spool and shaft, which are not quite synonymous. What to think of this, decide for yourself. And it's time for us to look at this beauty. The fan of the Ultrafan is a work of art. It is not metal, the old versions were solid titanium, but composite, carbon blades with titanium leading edges, very beautiful and light. According to Rolls-Royce, minus 340 kilograms per one engine compared to the old versions. In addition, the gearbox reduces the rotation speed and consequently the load, which along with the new design made it possible to make it simply huge, 140 inches in diameter. For example, the current record holder, the giant GE9X from Boeing 777X, has a fan with a diameter of 134 inches. And the Trent XWB, also quite large, looks modest here, only 118 inches. And also the question that arises when you see this beauty. Why is the fan so bluish green? My expert opinion, no idea. It feels like this is a purely visual feature. Just a black fan doesn't surprise anyone anymore. And here is something so unusual. Besides, the engine is presented as a breakthrough in green technology. And look, a green fan. And from the world of fantasy. When creating the Ultra Fan, Rolls-Royce considered the option of integrating into it a variable pitch fan blades. Yes, like on turboprop engines. This would allow it to be much more flexible in flights and abandon the thrust reverser. And it would look very cool. But there has been no news about this idea for a long time. Apparently the engineers decided that they had enough technical risks. So for now, the implementation of something close can be seen on the open rotor CFM Rise engine. But that's another story. Okay, all this technology is great, but what does Ultrafan have to offer in terms of performance? The fan diameter is 140 inches. The overall pressure ratio in the compressors is 70 to 1. 70. Now, if the engine is 60, this is already cool. The bypass ratio is 15 to 1, a completely wild figure. Until recently, everyone was surprised by the PW1000G with its 12 and a half. Fuel consumption should also fall sharply, according to the company's statements, by 25% compared to the Trent family. But I emphasize with its first representatives. Compared to the new ones, this figure should wander around 10%, which is also very decent. In terms of thrust performance, the Ultrafan is the successor to the Trent. During various series of tests, the thrust of the prototypes steadily increased, initially reaching 31 to 36 tons force, with a further increase to around 44. This is more than the thrust of the top Trent XWB engines. The final question, let's say we have an engine, but where is the plane it is being made for? And here we have to take a step back. Ultrafan is not an engine, it is a program for creating engines. Even now various centers continue research and testing of various options, similar in design but different in parameters. The engine whose performance I described is in fact a top technology demonstrator, which should show the maximum of what the project is capable of. So don't expect that it's exactly what will soon appear under the wing of some aircraft. Rolls-Royce itself claims that the Ultrafan concept is scalable and allows for engines with thrusts from 25,000 to 110,000 pounds force. This range is extremely ambitious, as it covers almost the entire spectrum of jet engines for commercial aircraft. The potential family will replace the modern trends and will even be able to compete with the GE9X on the one hand and on the other in smaller versions will be able to enter the single aisle airliner market, while Rolls-Royce clearly does not dominate now. Here of course it should be borne in mind that the performance depending on the version will change. I doubt that they will be able to make an engine of a size suitable for the A320 and maintain for example a bypass ratio of 15 to 1. But in any case, these will be impressive motors. 
And given that the real serial versions may appear only by the end of the 2020s, or even the beginning of the 2030s, we should look at what will happen in aviation at that time. Maybe Ultrafan will gradually start replacing Trent. Maybe it will come in time for the next generation of the A320 family. Or maybe it will end up under the wing of the long-awaited Boeing NMA 797, which the guys from Seattle are still trying to create, sometimes pushing the project forward, sometimes freezing it. And then, who knows what aviation will show us in the next decade. The history of Rolls-Royce is full of ups and downs, and I think they will not be changing this tradition. What they will succeed in, we will find out in the final video about the project in 2040. In the meantime, comment what you think about Ultrafan, and subscribe to the channel. Fast flights on Rolls Royces, and soft landings to you.